food shortage fishing, what if I can't buy bait? Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. I trust that you're gonna get some excellent value out of this video. I'm going to show you nine amazing baits that you can easily find, including this really weird one that most people have no idea exists. So stick around for that. I've been fishing the beach and rocks for more than 40 years and I've caught so many fish on these epic baits. You can too, including snapper, brim, whiting, luderick, groper, trevally, even mulloway. This means that you can catch fresh fish to feed your family and won't pay a single cent for them. If you don't live near a beach, don't worry. I'm doing a video of more amazing baits that you can find in estuaries, lakes and rivers. So make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell for when that comes out. This morning I'm down by the beach. So what if I haven't been able to buy bait? What are my options? Can I still go fishing? Can I still have confidence that I'm going to catch fish? Absolutely. Now I'm going to show you some things right now that you can use for bait to catch dinner. The first super effective bait that we're going to have a look at is green weed, which you can probably see the green colour on the rocks just behind me. There are a number of fish that actually love eating green weed and at high tide, when the water comes in here, the fish actually come in here and they munch away and eat all the weeds. So I'm just going to grab some and show you what it's like. Look at this. You can see this delicious green weed. This is what we rock fishermen call cabbage. There's actually two different types of weed that grows on the rocks. There's this what we call cabbage weed. And then also there's what we call string weed, which is like fine hair. And both of them are really good bait. This particular weed is the favourite food for a fish called luderick. Luderick are actually very popular for a lot of people actually like to specialise in fishing for luderick. Also, a fish called drummer or rock blackfish. Love this weed for bait. I've also caught brim and trevally as well. And you find this on the rocks at the end of a beach, just like where we are here. Um, in the case of here today, I can see that there's been a lot of luderick here because there's not a massive amount. Uh, the fish actually come up here and feed. So that's actually a good sign because if I can tell that the fish have been feeding here, then I know that at high tide, if I just hung on the edge of the beach here, and I will teach you a method in another video of how to actually rig this up and how to use the green weed for bait. But this is a fantastic bait. Luderick are a really good fish to eat. And one of my favorite fish for eating is drama or rock blackfish. Fantastic. Depending on where you live in the world, another excellent bait or something to eat is catching octopus, which can be found at low tide on rocky headlands. In New South Wales where I live, it is illegal to catch or collect octopus from any ocean rocks. So make sure that you check out your local rules and regulations. Many beaches in Australia have large colonies of beach worms. They exist in the millions. Beach worms are a premium bait for species like brim, whiting, trevally, Mulloway and Australian Salmon. Check out my many YouTube videos on beachworming. Crabs are an absolutely amazing bait. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. All I did to catch this guy is I stuck my knife down. I just scared him along a crack until he ran in my hand. I put, you know, you basically got to outsmart the crabs. So I put my hand down in one spot to stop him and just scared him along the crack until he rang up into my hand. And sometimes they think that your hand is like a little crevice that they're gonna hide in. And they'll just tuck up in there. The only thing is you've just gotta watch out for their nippers. Thankfully this crab, his nippers aren't too big. Although if I let him, he could probably grab a hold of me and maybe draw a little bit of blood. But these are an amazing bait. We obviously, we eat prawns, we eat crabs. Fish absolutely love crabs. Now you could be down at the beach and you could come onto the rocks and just have a play around and catch a few crabs, but you could actually use these for bait fishing off the sand. You don't have to fish off the rocks if that's something you'd rather not do. Just come and have, have some fun, collect some bait on the rocks and take it over onto the beach. And these are a great bait for brim. When you're fishing off the rocks, these are a delicacy for groper. 
Uh, snapper actually really like crabs as well. There's so many different fish that like crabs. The best time to catch them is low tide, obviously. I'm actually not here at low tide today because low tide was super early this morning. It was too early to come out and film this. So I've come down. It's probably high tide in about an hour and a half, but I'm still able to catch some crabs. Make sure you check out my first food shortage fishing video where I give you a detailed list of what you need to be able to survive. This is like a standard list of things that you should be getting ready for now so that you're well organised and prepared. Check out the rock pools at the end of a beach for small fish that have been trapped there at low tide. This occurs often. Many times I've seen schools of mullet trapped in rock pools. It can be a fun exercise catching them. If possible, herd the fish into a small narrow part at the end of a pool or crevice and then block the escape route. This will make it easier to catch them. The next amazing bait that we're going to get, you get at low tide most of the time on the rocks. It's absolutely incredible and fish go crazy for it. So I'm just going to go down and grab some. Ooh, look at that. This incredible bait is called kanji. It's actually spelt C-U-N-J-E-V-O-I, kanjivoi. And it grows in absolute abundance right around the coast. In my 40 plus years of fishing and collecting baits like this, I've been amazed at how quickly it grows. Sometimes you'll have a massive sea huge waves that will completely scour the coast of Kanji, but within a couple of months, there's mass amounts growing again. It's just amazing how it regenerates. It's so cool. And I'm just gonna cut some up for you so that you can have a close up look at this incredible bait. Okay, so I'm gonna get that guy. And then, I'm gonna, uh... Okay, and a bit more. Look at that. Now, I'm gonna put my finger in, around, and I'm gonna go. Ooh. Look at that. What a cracking bait this is. It's quite incredible how you can see in there the empty cavity now. This is really like flesh. It's quite incredible. Look at that. Just an amazing thing. And fish absolutely go nuts over kanji. You can catch a lot of different fish on kanji. You know, a lot of really good quality eating fish. Brim, snapper, drummer, lots of stuff gets into that. All sorts of strange creatures that live in the ocean. And you know, believe it or not, you can use this if you're fishing off, off the edge of the rocks, like where I am now. You can actually use it off the beach as well, onto, onto the sand bottom, preferably towards the end of a beach. On the sand near where the rocks start is really good, but this is amazing. And like I said, it regenerates so quickly. Incredible. Seriously, that is an amazing gift to fishermen. It's such a great bait. A really easy bait to forage for is the pippy. These can be found on many beaches and are great bait for whiting, brim, trevally and dart. Pippies can be collected at low tide by digging in the sand with your feet using a side to side action as the water from a receding wave washes past you. Sand crabs live in the sandy areas on a beach, generally above the high tide mark. They are easily found by looking for their holes. Often you see them running along the sand and disappearing down a hole, especially at night when they come out in numbers. Their burrows are not very deep, so you can easily dig down and catch them. People absolutely love eating oysters. Do you like eating oysters? I know I do, although I prefer them with um, some bacon or some Mornay or perhaps uh, vinaigrette dressing. Do you know that fish love oysters even more than people. And any of these places, any 
So many places have oysters growing and they are actually fantastic bait for a variety of species. So you can harvest oysters, maybe eat a couple yourself, but harvest some oysters to use for bait as well. They're really good. The only thing I would say is when you're harvesting oysters is that you use a short stiff knife and you just take care and be careful because you don't want to slip and cut yourself on the oysters. But oysters are a very common, easy to access and great bait for many species. Now next, I'm going to head over to a lake where I'm going to show you what amazing baits that you can find in an estuary. Whether you're on a lake or a river, there are incredible baits that work really well for fishing. So make sure that you like and subscribe and whack that bell so that you're notified for that video which is coming up really soon. And I trust that you guys are going to apply what I've been teaching you today and start using some of the amazing baits that occur in nature totally free and are really good for catching fish. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.